allow recording again so mm. that we don't miss out. And then, great, seems, seems good. All quiet on the Western Front. Um, okay, okay, so hello everybody. Uh, welcome to, oh, I have to let people in one-on-one. -on -one. All right, that's fine. Okay, hello, welcome to uh, Galien a gay reading of the <laughs> movie Alien. Uh, thank you all for being here. Um, if, if there's any technical difficulties, let us know in the chat. I'm Gabby Dunn. Um, this is a live read of the original script for 1979's Alien. Uh, this script is different from the movie itself um, because that, it, it, they, it seems to me from watching and reading that they, uh, improvised a lot or cut a lot of exposition. So this has a lot more exposition. Um, but yeah, this is the Walter Hill script, which is um, famously known as one of the most poetic scripts ever written in screenwriting. And I guess they study it. Uh, so yeah, um, Carly is our director and stage direction slash alien noises. So um, Carly's gonna introduce everyone and say who we're playing and then we will get started. All right. Hello, hello. Um, yeah, let's get into this. Um, yeah, I'm Carly. Stage direction will also be making some, you know, like exhaustively researched alien sounds. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, first up, we've got Jen Richards playing Ripley. We've got Brittany Nichols as Dallas. Drew Gregory as Lambert. Mal Blum as Brett, just Brett. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Jess Tom as Kane. What's up? Robin Romer as Ash. Symphony Sanders as Parker. Hey. And Gabby Dunn as Mother. The role I was mother. born to play. <laughs> Call me Mother. Mother. Okay. <laughs> I've been waiting to do that all day. Uh, <laughs> Okay, cool. So that so this is an script is known for its beautiful description. So um, stay stay locked and loaded for those. Also, you'll see that some of us have the the Nostromo as our background, uh, and some of us aren't that good at computers. <laughs> <laughs> some of us have MacBook Airs that don't support this technology. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Go for it, Carly. Mm -hmm. Alien, fade in sometime in the future. Interior engine room, empty, cavernous. Interior engine cubicle, circular, jammed with instruments, all of the idol. Console chairs for two, empty. Interior oily corridor, sea level. Long, dark, empty, turbos throbbing, no other movement. Interior corridor, A level, long, empty, interior infirmary, distressed ivory walls, all instrumentation at rest. Interior corridor to bridge, black, empty, interior bridge, vacant, two space helmets resting on chairs, electrical hum. Lights on the helmets begin to signal one another. Moments of silence, a yellow light goes on. Data mind bank in background. Electronic hum, a green light goes on in front of one helmet. Electronic pulsing sounds, a red light goes on in front of the other helmet. An electronic conversation ensues, reaches a crescendo, then silence. The lights go off, save the yellow. Interior corridor to hypersleep vault. Lights come on. Seven gowns hang from the curved wall. Vault door opens. Interior hypersleep vault. Explosion of escaping gas. Kane rubs asleep from his eyes, stands, looks around, stretches, looks at the other freezer compartments, scratches, moves off. Interior galley, Kane plugs in a silex, lights a cigarette, coughs, grinds some coffee beans, runs some water through. Rise and shine, Lambert. Another lid pops open, a young woman sits up. What time is it? What do you care? Interior galley, pot now half full, Kane watches it drip, inhales the fragrance. <sighs> now Dallas and Ash. Good morning, Captain. Where's the coffee? Brewing. Lambert pours a cup of coffee, interior hypersleep vault, two more lids pop open, a pair of men sit up, look at each other. Interior, oh, sorry. Interior galley, Kane enjoys a freshly brewed cup. Ripley. Parker. 
And if we have Parker, can Brett be far behind? Right. Interior hypersleep vault, Dallas looks at his groggy circus. One of you jokers, get the cat. Ripley picks a limp cat out of one of the compartments. Interior mess, the crew of the United States commercial starship Nostromo is seated around a table. Oh, are you yeah. not gonna? Okay. Is that? Is this, yeah, you is should it? read the who they are. Oh, okay. Dallas, Captain, Kane, Executive Officer, Ripley, Warrant Officer, Ash, Science Officer, Lambert, Navigator, Parker, Engineer, Brett, Engineering Technician, Jones, a cat. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, am I cold? Still with us, Brett? Yo. Lucky us. I feel dead. You look dead. Nice to be back. Before we dock, maybe we better go over this bonus situation. Yeah. Brett and I think we deserve a full share. You two will get what you contracted for, just like everybody else. Everybody else gets more than us. Everybody else deserves more than you two. Mother wants to talk to you. I saw it. Yellow light for my eyes only. Now everybody hit their stations. Interior computer room annex, floor to ceiling data banks, another flashing yellow light. Dallas enters, runs through access procedure. Inner door opens. Dallas moves to the console chair, sits, punches the keyboard. Scre legend on screen, alert over monitoring function for matrix display and inquiry. Mother Open monitor address matrix. Command, Dallas, oh, sorry, go for it. Dallas types out command priority alert. Over monitor function ready for inquiry. Dallas types, what's the story, mother? Interior bridge. Above eye level, the room is rigged by view screens, all of them black. Blank. Kane, Ripley, Lambert, and Ash enter. Dallas's seat remains empty. All of them now dress. They find their way to individual consoles. Ripley puts down the cat, straps herself into the high back chair. Plug a sitting. They all begin throwing switches. The control room starts to come to life. Colored lights flicker, chase each other across glowing screens. Give us something to look at. Take a look at this. Where's Earth? You're the navigator. That's not our system. Scan. Lambert hits several toggles. On the screen, the images begin to drift. A moving image of a star field across one of the screens. Exterior Nostromo, the factory starship lumbering within the depths of interstellar space. Function, petroleum tanker and refinery. That's too many numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Battered exterior encrusted with dark sludge. Interior bridge, Lambert pours over charts, con consults her console, puzzled. Contact traffic control. This is commercial vessel Nostromo out of Houston, registration number 180246, calling Antarctic Traffic Control. Do you read me? Over. Nothing. Keep trying. You got a reading yet? We're way out in the boondocks here. Keep trying. Working on it. Found it. Just short of Zeta 2 reticuli. We haven't even reached the outer rim yet. Hard to believe. What the hell are we doing out here? What are you talking about? It's not our system. Interior engine room, giant reactor system purring smoothly. Interior engine room, cubicle. Parker and Brett in a glass cubicle, each having a beer. Huge power plant stretching before them, all units on automatic hyperdrive. Parker hits a switch above his desk. A green light goes on. How's your light? Green. Mine too. <laughs> Christ, what is it now? Right. Report to the mess. Interior oily corridor, sea level. I want to know why they never come down here. This is where the work is. Same reason we never have... Same reason we have half a share to their one. Our time is their time. That's the way they see it. Well, I'll tell you something. It stinks. Mm. They move towards the companionway leading up to the B level. Interior mess, entire crew present. Some of you may have figured out that we're not home. We're only halfway back to Earth. What the hell? 
Mother's interrupted the course of the voyage. Why? She's programmed to do that if certain conditions arise. They have. Seems Mother intercepted a transmission of unknown origin. She got us up to check it out. Transmission? Out here. What kind of transmission? An acoustic beacon. It repeats at intervals of 12 seconds. Is it an SOS? Unknown. Human? Unknown. So what? We're obligated under Section B2. Christ! I hate to say this, but we're a commercial ship, not a rescue team. This kind of duty's not in our contract. But if it's for some money... You better read your contract. Any systemized transmission indicating possible intelligent origin must be investigated at penalty of total forfeiture. We're going in. That's it. Right. We're going in. Sir. Can we land it on it? Somebody did. That's what I mean. Interior bridge. Dallas, Kane, Ripley, and Ash stand around the illuminated map table. Lambert sits at the radio directional console. Okay, let's all hear it. Nods at Lambert, she switches on the audio system, hissing, static, then an ungodly sound, eight seconds worth. Good God. Static. What the hell is it? It doesn't sound like any radio signal I've ever heard. Maybe it's a voice. We'll know soon. Have you honed in on it? I found the quad quadrant. We're close. It's coming from ascension six minutes, 20 seconds, declination minus 39 degrees, two seconds. Show me that on the screen. Lambert punches buttons. One of the view screens flickers and a small dot of light appears. Can you get in a little closer? No, you have to look at it from this distance. That's what I'm going to do. Screen zooms to a small planetoid. Smart ass. That's it, planetoid, diameter 1200 kilometers. Tiny. Any rotation? Yeah, about two hours. Gravity? 0.86. You can walk on it. Exterior Nostromo model, moving within range of the planet. Approaching orbital apogee mark, 20 seconds, 19, 18. Rule 92 degrees starboard yaw. High above the planet, the factory ship rotates. Engines fire briefly. Interior bridge. Equatorial orbit nailed. Exterior Nostromo, now within the planet's orbit, the planet rolling by underneath. Interior bridge. Give me an EC pressure reading. 3.45 Newton over centimeter squared. Shout if it changes. You worried about redundancy management disabling CMGIS? GI, just, yes, something? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> CMG control is inhabited via DAS. We'll argument the TACS and monitor ATMDC and computer interface. Feel better? A lot. Prepare to disengage from platform. Interior engine room cubicle. L alignment on port and starboard is green. Green on spinal umbilicus severance. Interior bridge. Crossing the Terminator, entering night side. Exterior Nostromo, below night's curtain rolls across the sphere's surface. Interior bridge. It's coming up, it's coming up. Stand by, stand by. 15 seconds, 10, five, four, three, two, one, lock. Disengage. Exterior Nostromo, the tug disengages from the platform, interior bridge. Dallas watches the refinery moving away on the view screen. Umbilicus clear. Procession corrected. Okay, the money's safe. Let's take it down. Exterior Nostromo, the tug begins its arc toward the dark surface. Interior bridge. Dropping 50,000 meters, down, down, 49,000 meters, entering atmosphere. Jones sits on a window platform and watches a cloud approaching. Exterior, Nostromo, the ship drops into the thick cloud layer. Interior, bridge. Turbulence. Navigation lights on. Exterior, Nostromo, tug module hydroplaning downward. A set of brilliant lights switch on, cut through the thick atmosphere. Interior, engine room, cubicle. Parker and Brett, strapped in their seats, begin rocking from the sudden extreme turbulence. What was that? Pressure drop in intake three. Must have lost a shield. Three's gone. Dust pouring into the intake. Shut her down! Shut her down! What do you think I'm doing? 
We got an engine full of dust. I'll bypass it and vent the stuff back out. What the hell are we gonna, what the hell are we going through? If we don't crash dollars to your aunt's cherries, we'll get an electrical fire. <laughs> Interior bridge. The turbulence continues unabated. Lambert's eyes follow cross-plot gauges. Approaching point of origin, closing at 20 kilometers, 15 and slowing, 10, 5. We're, we're directly above the source of the transmission. What's the terrain? S something coming up. Looks good. There. Flat. It'll do. Mark. Let's go with it. Take her down. Drop begins now. 15 kilometers and dropping. 12, 10, 8 and slowing, 5, 3, 2, 1 kilometer and slowing. Activate lifter quads. A throb of jets. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, quads on. Kill drive engines. The main engines fall silent. 900 meters and dropping. 800, 700. Exterior planet night, storm blowing across the night shrouded surface. The Nostromo hovers on glowing beams of light. Landing struts unfold like insect legs. The ship slams down, rocks heavily on massive shock absorbers. Interior bridge night. Okay, we're down. An enormous vibration. The panels in the room flash simultaneously. The lights go out. Lost it. Lost it. Interior engine room, another huge vibration. An electrical fire breaks out along three control panels. Interior engine room cubicle. Parker and Brett see the pandemonium below. Brett hits the secondary generator switch. A pressure valve blows. Another conduit breaks loose. All lights go out. They grab hand lights from the wall. Interior bridge, still in darkness. Secondary generator should kick over. Where is it? Moments. Nothing. Kane grabs emergency headlamp from someplace followed by dallas and lambert what happened engine room what happened god damn dust in the engines that's what happened <laughs> electric fires it's big <laughs> interior engine room cubicle parker fighting an electrical fire on one of his panels brett shouting into his voice amp the intakes to clogged we overhead we overheated and burned out a whole cell christ it's really breaking loose down here Interior so, bridge. Somebody give me a simple answer. Has the hole been breached? I don't see anything. We've still got pressure. Beep. Hit the screen. Kane snaps three toggles. The screen flickered, not the remain black. Nothing. Exterior ship night. The wind sounds. Storm continues to blow around the craft. A few glittering lights distinguish the Nostromo from absolute darkness. Interior engine room cubicle. Parker on the communicator to the bridge. Floor panel is totally shot. The secondary load sharing unit is out and at least three cells on the 12 module are gone. Interior bridge, Ripley listening to Parker, Dallas standing over her, no images on any screens. Is that it? Couldn't fix it out here anyway. And we need to reroute a couple of these ducks. Can't really fix them without a whole dry dock. What else? We lost a cell. Some fragments caked up and blew the whole system. We've got to clean it all out and repressurize. Right. All right, go ahead and get started on four panel. I'll be down in five minutes. How long before we're functional? 15, 20 hours. Stay on it. What about the auxiliaries? Working on it. Exterior ship night. Bridge lights come to life. Illuminate nothing but a patch of featureless ground. The wind and storm now at a higher pitch. Interior bridge. Dallas, Kane, Lambert, and Ash slouched around the bridge, drinking coffee, occasionally staring at the opaque screens. Any response yet? Nothing but the same transmission every 32 seconds. All of the channels are dead. Kick on the floods. Exterior ship. A ring of floodlights comes to life, dimly illuminating the rocky landscape. The wind and dust now at a higher pitch. Interior bridge, night. Dallas stares out the windows at the swirling storm illuminated by the external floodlights. We can't go anywhere in this. Mother says the sun's coming up in about 20 minutes. How far from the source of the transmission? Northeast, about 3,000 meters. Close enough to walk to. Can you run an atmospheric? 
almost primordial, inert nitrogen, a high concentrate of carbon dioxide crystals, methane, ammonia, almost frozen. We're working on the trace elements. Pressure. 10 to the fourth dynes per square centimeter. Moisture content. 98 pp, it's wet with high vapor content. Anything else? Rock, lava base, deep cold, well below the line. I volunteer for the first group going out. I hear you. Lambert, you too. Swell. <laughs> One more thing. Let's get out some weapons. Dun, dun, dun. Interior engine room cubicle. Parker and Brett laser welding one of the ducts. Shirts off, sweat steaming. <laughs> Ripley rewiring one of the panels. Parker shuts down the laser and specs the fusion. Hey, Ripley, I got a question. Yeah? Do we get to go out on the expedition or are we just stuck here until everything's fixed? You know the answer to that. What about the shares in case they find anything? Don't worry, you'll both get what's coming to you. I'm not doing any more work until we get full shares. You're guaranteed by law that you'll get a share. Now both of you, knock it off and get back to work. Parker looks right. at her. Oh, we're great. Interior, main airlock, Dawn. Dallas, Kane, and Lambert enter the lock. All wear gloves, boots, jackets, carry laser pistols. Kane touches a button, servo wine. Then the inner door slides quietly shut. The trio pull on their helmets. I'm sending. Do you hear me? Receiving. Receiving. All right. Keep away from the weapons unless I say otherwise. Interior, Ash's blister, Dawn. Ash descends companion way to blister, punches up screens and instrumentation. Interior, main airlock, Dawn. Open outer hatch. Another servo whine. Ponderously, the outer lock hatch slides open. Clouds of dust and steam swirl before the three crew members. A mobile gangway slides out the open hatch. Burnt orange sunlight beyond. Exterior planet dawn. The trio walk down the gangplank, arrive at surface level, their feet striking onto a thick layer of lava rock, the wind at gale force. Which way? Over here. You lead. No, I, I can't see a goddamn thing. Turn on the finder. It's tuned to the transmission. Let it lead you. It's on. Ash, are you receiving? Interior Ash's blistered dawn. Ash leaning over his console watches them beneath him, corresponding images on the screen in front of him. Do you read you? Good contact on my board. Getting you clear and free. Let's keep the line open. Exterior, planet, dawn. The three crew members push their way along, like divers at the bottom of a dark sea. The wind and dust continues driving down in dark sheets. Lambert repeats. Can't see more than three meters in any direction. Quit griping. I like griping. Come on. What a wonderful little place. Totally unspoiled. They wait on following Lambert. She abruptly halts, confused. Interior, blister, dawn. Ash watches his view screens intently. I've got it again. Any problems? Yeah, a lot of dust and wind. Starting to get some fade on the beam. Exterior plant, planet dawn. The trio moves through a dark limo. This way. I'm losing it. It's gone again. They shelter under a grotesque rock. Storm shrieks around them. Now we're really blind. Should be dawn soon. Ash, do you hear me? How long until daylight? <sighs> Sun's coming up in about 10 minutes. We shouldn't be able to see something then. Or the other way around. Interior blistered dawn, ash checking instruments. Exterior, the Nostromo sunrise, atmosphere turning the color of blood. Then the sun is up. Interior, engine cubicle. Brett and Parker still at work. Ripley moves away from her panel in triumph. Right, you ought to be able to handle the rest. Yeah, don't worry. Yeah, if you run into trouble, I'll be on the bridge. Right, Brett. Oh, I got lost. I'm sorry. <laughs> Classic Brett. <laughs> Real Brett, Brett I'm not doing any more reading until I get no. a <laughs> <laughs> Uh What page is it? I'm sorry. 
Page Wait, 40. we're all the way up 50. Oh, sorry. No, no. 29. Page 29. Page 29. Scene oh, okay, 50. okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> oh. Say right, right. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be great when you get it. <laughs> she hey, Fred, if you run into any, any trouble, I'll be up on the bridge, okay? You got it? Right. She leaves. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> Oh. I've been waiting to say that fucking line. <laughs> Fuck. Exterior planet day. The three figures stand and move away from the rock formation. There is enough daylight to see where they are walking. The signal begins to fade in again. Interior blister day. Ash watches video images of the three, now moving again. Ripley's voice comes through. How's it going out there? Interior bridge. Ripley at a console. All right. Have you tried putting the transmission through the ECIU? Mother hasn't identified it yet. I'll give it a shot. Be my guest. She punches some buttons. The noise is now heard on her speaker. Exterior planet day, dust clearing, three tiny figures against the landscape. Exterior planet day, empty landscape. Then Kane comes up over a rise, startled by what he sees. Suddenly the transmission is deafening. Jesus Christ. Dallas and Lambert join him equally startled. Their POV day, a gargantuan spaceship rising from the rock clearly of non-human manufacture. Exterior planet day. Noise still at shrill pitch. All members of the party shouting into their voice amps. Some kind of spaceship. Are you sure? It's weird. Ash, can you see this? Interior, Ash's blistered day. Ash looking at the craft on a screen. Yeah, never seen one like it. Neither has mother. Keep looking for enhancement. Whatever the transmission is, it's inside that. I'll go in and have a look. Hold on, Ash, I don't see any lights or movement, do you? I can't get a reading. Exterior Pretty planet day. Power. I can't, just can't get a reading. It looks pretty dead from here. We'll approach the base. They move toward the ship. Interior blister day, Ash readjusts his instrumentation. There's only one thing I can- Dallas? Dallas, do you read me? Interior bridge day. Ripley is running the transmission through ECIU. Over the speakers, Dallas's voice fades in. No sign of life. No lights. No movement. We're beneath the base. His voice fades into the static, disappears. Exterior derelict day. The lower part of the entrance filled with dust and pumice. Looks like an entrance. Yeah. Let's move inside. Great idea. Hey, they climb up to one of the apertures and enter. Interior chamber, day. They move into a high ceilinged chamber. Ghostly light filters dust-filled air. A few meters in an opening appears. Dallas leans over and looks into the hole, only blackness. He unclips the light from his belt, shines it down into the hole. Just goes down, smooth walls. I can't see the bottom, light won't reach. Kane and Lambert come over. Dallas begins unclipping gear from his belt. Let's take a look around here first. Kane and Lambert exchange a glance. Dallas shines his light about, sees a large glossy urn tan coloration. Round opening at the top, empty within. Then Dallas shines his light on nearby wall, moves closer. Over here. They approach, train their lights along the floor. A machine, on the mechanism, a small bar moves steadily back and forth, sliding noiselessly in the grooves. Still functioning. Automatic recording. Now for a look down below. This is your big chance. Okay. Don't unhook yourself from the cable. Be out in less than 10 minutes. Read me. Aye, aye. Dallas rigs a tripod across the opening in the floor, unspools a couple feet of wire. Kane attaches the end of it to his chest unit, climbs over the lip and drops into the hole, now hanging by the wire. Head and shoulders out of the opening, Kane activates the climbing unit, lowers himself into the fissure. Interior shaft opening. Kane braces his feet against the wall of the vertical shaft, switches on his light, points it into the depths. The beam penetrates only 30 feet or so, then is lost in darkness. Hotter in here. Warm air rising from below. He starts down, playing out the line, descending into short leaps, stops to catch his breath, breathing, rasping loudly in his helmet. A little light filters from above. Looking up, Kane can see the mouth of the hole, a glowing spot. You okay in there? Haven't hit the bottom yet. This is work. Can't talk now. 
He kicks off and continues down, taking longer and longer hops as he gains confidence. Pausing for a moment to regain his breath, he shines the light on his instruments. I'm below ground level. Interior, bridge, day. Ripley at her console, still working on transmission. Gets a readout, looks worried, speaks into the communicator. Ash, urgent. Mother's deciphered part of the transmission. I'm afraid it may not be an SOS. Then what is it? She thinks it may be a warning. We've got to get through them right away. It's no use. Once we went inside, we lost them completely. All right, I'm going after them. I don't think so. We can't spare the personnel. We've got minimum takeoff cap capability right now. That's, what Dal that's why Dallas left us on board. I still think we should go after them. What's the point? In the time it takes to get there, they'll know if it's a warning. Ripley looks steadily at Ash on her monitor. His screen, not visible to her, shows blow up of helmeted, skeletal head, not human. Interior, derelict cargo hold. Kane resumes his downward climb. Suddenly, his feet lose their purchase as the walls of the shaft disappear. The tunnel has reached its end. Below him is dark, cavernous space. Deep breaths due to his violent exertion. See anything? No. Cave or something below me. Feels like the goddamn tropics in here. High nitrogen content, no oxygen. Still puffing, he releases his purchase on the stone walls, begins to lower himself on power. Now Kane is dangling free in darkness, spinning slowly on the wires, his chest unit unwinds. Then his feet hit bottom. Kane grunts in surprise, almost loses his balance. He flashes his suit lights. The beams reveal that he is on a large hold. Row after row of extrusions stretch from floor to ceiling. This is weird. What do you mean? There's something all over the walls. Kane walks across the chamber and examines the organic protrusions. Interior chamber above, Dallas and Lambert. How long till sunset? 20 minutes. Interior hold, Kane approaches the center of the room. On the floor are rows of leathery ovoid shapes. He walks around them, shines his light on one. It's like some kind of storage area. Is anybody there? Do you read me? Loud and clear. The place is full of leathery things. Like the one up above, they seem to be sealed. Can you see what's in them? I'll give it a look. Another great idea. He <laughs> tries to open one of them. It won't open. Kane. Strange feeling to it. Yeah. Don't open it. You don't know what's <gasps> in it. Kane peers closely at the leathery ovoids, turns away. Raised areas begin to appear where he touched it. He moves his light along the rows, turns back to the one he was examining. Something has changed. The opaque surface begins to clear. <laughs> Object becoming visible within. Cain shines his light on the floor at the base of it. He studies it. Jesus. What? Viscera and mandible now visible, the interior surface spongy and irregular. Cain shines the light inside. With shocking violence, a small creature smashes outward, fixes itself to his mask. Sizzling sound. The creature melts through the mask, attaches itself to Cain's face. Cain tears at the thing with his hands, his mouth forced open. He falls backwards. Interior chamber above. Cain? Kane, do you hear me? What's the matter? We better haul him out. It'll yank him right off his feet if he's not expecting it. Try him again. Kane? Kane? God damn it, answer me. <laughs> the line's slack. He doesn't answer. Do, do you think he could have unhooked himself? Dallas switches on the winch motor. With a whine, it begins to reel the line in. After a moment, the line tightens with a jerk. The motor slows, laboring under added weight. It caught. Is it hooked on something? No, it's coming. I can't see anything. Line's well, still moving. Dallas shines his light again. Here he comes. The winch labors heavily. Get ready to grab him. Kane appears at the top of the opening, dangles limply from the wire. Dallas reaches for him, then recoils. Look out! There's something on his face! What is it? Kane appears to be completely unconscious. The life form is still wrapped motionless around his face. Oh, Jesus. Don't touch it. They grapple with Kane's limp body, lift him from the hole. Exterior, the Nostromo, sunset. Atmosphere turning the color of blood, and the sun is down. The ring of floodlights on the ship come to life, feebly combating the darkness and continuing storm. Interior, bridge, interior, slash interior blister, dusk, intercutting. Jones the cat staring through a port opening at the storm.
Ripley waiting on the bridge, Ash stares at his inactive monitors suddenly. We've got them. They're back on the screens. How many? Three blips. They're coming this way. Dallas. Dallas, can you hear me? We hear you. We're coming back. Kane's injured. We'll need some help getting him in. I'll go. Ash moves from the blister. Ripley remains seated at her console. Interior, engine room, cubicle. Parker and Brett listening over the intercom. Exterior, landing leg, night. Dallas and Lambert dragging Kane on a travoy towards landing leg. Interior, passageway near airlock. Ash comes down the steps, hurries to the interlock door, presses the wall voice amp. Ripley, I'm by the inner lock hatch. Okay. Exterior landing leg night. Dallas and Lambert drag Kane onto lift platform. Interior passageway near airlock. Ash waiting. Interior bridge exter slash exterior landing leg night. Intercut. Ripley seated alone in the bridge. Dallas and Lambert stand at base of landing leg, supporting Kane between them. Ripley, are you there? Right here. We're coming up. What happened to Kane? Some kind of organism. It's attached itself to him. You gotta get him to the infirmary. Yeah, I, I, I need a clear definition. Just open the hatch, Ripley. No, wait a minute. If we let it in, the ship could be infected. You know the quarantine procedure. 24 hours for decontamination. He could die in 24 hours. Open the hatch. Listen to me. If I break quarantine, we may all die. Listen to women. <laughs> <laughs> Except for this other woman. Oh, sorry. Um, open the goddamn hatch. We have to get him inside. I Oops. can't. And if you were in my position, mm. you'd do the same. Interior, engine room, cubicle. Parker and Brett listen. Interior, passageway near airlock. Ripley, do you hear me? I read you, Dallas. The answer is negative. Ash hits the emergency switch. A red light goes on. Servo whine, followed by a solid metallic clunk. Inner hatch open. Interior engine room cubicle. Parker and Brett react. Interior bridge, night. Ripley's console flashes. Inner hatch open. She can't believe what she sees. Interior passageway near airlock. Dallas and Lambert stagger on into passageway. Carrie Kane's body between them. Dallas pulls off his helmet. Stay clear. God. Is it alive? I don't know, but don't touch it. Take him to the infirmary. Right. Ash and Brett move in carefully to help with the limp. My script's got a burden. Interior infirmary. Kane's helmet. Hands begin to open it with a laser cutter. The helmet separates easily. The two halves part. The life form slowly pulsing on Kane's oh, face. They're so gross. Dallas yeah. hesitates, then puts his hand on the small creature, tries to pull it free. Unsuccessful. The alien remains anchored to Kane's tissue. Let me try. Interior, corridor outside, infirmary window. Lambert, Parker, and Brett watch through the infirmary window. Ripley appears. Lambert turns and looks at her. A long moment. You were going to leave us out there. Maybe she should have. Who, who the hell knows what that is? Right. <laughs> I was trying to do my job. Let's leave it at that. Now, what happened out there? We went into the derelict. There were no signs of life. That transmission must have been going for centuries. What about the crew? Only found one of them. Looked like he'd been shot. And Kane? He volunteered to search the lower level alone. He found some kind of eggs. We told him not to touch them. Something happened in there. When we pulled him out, it was on his face. Interior infirmary. We better let the machine work on him. Ash presses a switch. The machine lights up. Kane is sucked into a slot in the wall, visible inside through the glass layer. A blinding colored light performs antisepsis. Two video monitors pop up. Ash punches three buttons. An x-ray image appears. A colored depiction of Kane's head and upper torso. The alien is clearly visible. A maze of complicated biology. Kane's jaws are forced open. The creature has extruded a long tube down his mouth and throat, the appendage ending at the base of the esophagus. Got something Ugh. down his goddamn throat. That must be how it's getting oxygen to him. Doesn't make sense. It paralyzes him, puts him into a coma, then keeps him alive? We have to get it off him somehow. At the moment, the creature is keeping him alive. If we remove it, we might terminate Kane. We have to take the chance and cut it off him. You'll take the responsibility? That's right. Dallas presses, presses a switch. 
Kane slides back out of the booth. Ash takes a surgical laser blade from the case. He manipulates the knife until he has a comfortable grip, flicks a small button with his thumb. The blade begins to hum. Touches the scalpel to the creature. The electronic blade slides effortlessly downward. Suddenly, a urine-like fluid begins to drip from the wound. Starting to bleed. The liquid flows onto the bedding next to Kane's head. Starts to hiss. Smoke curls up from the stain. Next, the yellow fluid eats a hole through the bunk bed, then drips onto the deck below. Metal bubbling and sizzling. More smoke rises. Dallas frantically applies pressure to the wound. In the process, some of the fluid gets on Dallas's gloves. <laughs> they began to smoke. Dallas leaps back, pulls them off. They run into the corridor, coughing and choking from the fumes. Interior, passageway, outside, infirmary. Shit, it's going to eat through the decks and out the hole. They start to run for the companionway. Interior, passageway, B deck. Dallas wrenches an emergency lamp from a socket, hurls himself down a comp companionway. The others follow. There. A droplet of fluid is sizzling on the ceiling bulkhead. It oozes down, drips to the deck, continues to bubble, then goes through the bulkhead. What can we put under it? They charge down the next companionway below, interior maintenance corridor C deck. Dallas moves cautiously down the passageway, followed by Ripley, Parker, and Brett. Interior maintenance area C deck. They enter the maintenance area, look up to the ceiling bulkhead, the acid bubbles. Don't get under it. The acid drips to the deck, continues to sizzle slower. Yeah, it looks like it's losing steam. Dallas fishes a pen out of his pocket, probes the hole in the deck. It stopped penetrating. Yeah, after it penetrated two levels. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen anything like that, except molecular acid. This thing uses it for blood. Wonderful defense mechanism. You don't dare kill it. They start back towards the companionway. Interior infirmary. They return. Kane's still motionless on the bunk. The alien remains secured to his face, wound completely healed over. Any of the acid get on him? Uh, doesn't look like it. Is it still dripping that crap? Healed over. There must be some way we can get it off. I don't think you ought to try. Didn't work out too well last time. Dallas gives him a look in return. Ripley pe presses a button. Kane slides back into the diagnostic coffin. More buttons press. Displays light up again, showing the different parts of Kane's body. I better get some in, in vitro feeding started. So far, I can't tell what the alien has absorbed from a system. What's the stain on his lungs? Whatever it is, it's blocking the x-ray. The stain spreads. What happens now? You go back to work. Interior engine room cubicle. Brett at work in the cubicle, Parker supervising him. I think I've got it. Give it a try. Nothing. Damn. I was sure that was it. Well, it isn't. Try the next one. Right. What's happening down there? Oh. Hello? This, Parker, oh, Brett, yeah. what's happening? This goddamn woman, I tell her what's happening. My Johnson is happening. A lot of hard work. Uh, real work? <laughs> Interior bridge night. You ought to try it sometime. Yeah. I think I've got the toughest job on this ship. I have to see your bullshit. Woo! Get off my back! I'll get off your back when 12 module is fixed and we can get the hell out of here. Smart mouth broad. <laughs> Interior, infirmary. Ash running test on the equipment. Kane res respirating on the view screens above, still deep within a coma. All instruments recording his life processes. The alien's position unchanged. Ripley approaches, sits near Ash. Anything new? He's holding, no changes. What about the creature? It's got an outer layer of protein poly something. Saccharides, Plus, I think. The saccharides. <laughs> Plus, it's constantly slouching off cells and replacing them with polarized silicone. What gives it prolonged resistance to adverse environmental conditions? That enough for you? Plenty. What's it mean? Interesting combination of elements, making it practically invulnerable. Is that why you let it in? I was following a direct order, remember? While Dallas and Kane are off the ship, I'm senior officer. Yes, of course. I forgot. You also forgot the science division's basic quarantine law. No, that I didn't forget. You just broke it. What would you have done, Kane? 
His only chance at staying alive was to get into the infirmary. By breaking quarantine procedure, you risk everybody's life. Maybe I should have let him out there to die. Maybe I have jeopardized the rest of us. It's a risk I'm willing to take. This is your official position as science officer. Not exactly out of the manual. My first position of science is to the protection of betterment of human life. I take my responsibility as seriously as you. You do your job and I'll do mine. Ripley stands, looks at Ash. They walk off screen. Interior mess, Lambert playing with some string, amusing Jones, cat's cradle, both looking bored. Interior engine room cubicle, Parker and Brett at work on the final intake screen. Interior Narcissus, Dallas listening. Is it Narc Narcissus or Narcissus? Probably Narcissus. I thought so, okay. Dallas listening to a primitive tape, his foot tapping with the rhythm, beep, an interruption on the communicator. Dallas. I think you should have a look at Kane. Something's happening. Serious? Interesting. Dallas exits. Interior corridor outside infirmary window. Ash stares through the window. Dallas joins him. Ripley appears behind. A long pause. He's gone. Kane's prone form. The alien is no longer on his face. Kane's still unconscious but continues to breathe, face covered with sucker marks. If the door is closed. It must still be in there. We can't open the door. We don't want to let it out. Yeah, I remember. We can't grab it. We can't kill it. Maybe we can catch it. As long as we're careful not to damage it. Interior infirmary. They enter cautiously. Dallas begins moving slowly around the room, picking up a stainless steel tray, looking. Ash and Ripley do the same. Ripley bends down and peers under the bunk. Nothing. She stands, doesn't see the alien on a ledge above her. Her shoulder brushes against the creature. It drops onto her. She screams, twists. <laughs> the alien drops to the floor, then lies motionless. Its skin faded to a dead-looking gray. Ripley doesn't raise her eyes from the creature, prods the alien, no response. I think it's dead. You okay? Yeah. She carefully touches the creature with a metal probe, dishes the motionless life form into the tray, quickly closes the lid, lifts it onto a stainless steel table, bright light trained on the alien. The creature in a supine position. Ash touches at the alien with a surgical instrument, Mm, look at those suckers. No wonder we can get it off him. Where's its mouth? It's this tube-like thing up in here. It's hardening. It's dead. No life sign whatsoever. Well, then let's get rid of it. This has to go back. This is our first contact with a specimen like this. All kinds of tests need to be run. That thing bled acid. God knows what it'll do when it's dead. I think it's safe to assume it's not a zombie. Dallas. We have to keep this specimen. You're Dallas, don't you think? <laughs> You're the science well, officer? It's your decision. Then it's made. I'll seal it in a status tube. What about Kane? Ash turns back to the bunk, studies the life support gauges. Kane continues to breathe steadily. Running a fever and still unconscious. The machine will bring his temperature down. His vital functions are strong. Who knows? He may make it. Ash begins to seal the alien in a large vacuum tube. <sighs> I need some coffee. She turns and walks away. Interior black corridor to bridge. Ripley and Dallas. How could you leave that kind of decision to him? I just run the ship. Anything that has to do with science division, Ash has the final word. Yeah, but how did that happen? Same way everything else happens. Orders from the company. Yeah, but since when is that standard procedure? Standard procedure is do what they tell you. Besides, I only know about flying. I haul cargo for a living. Did you ship out with Bash before? First time. I went five hauls with another science man. Then two days before we left Thetis, they replaced him with Ash. So what? They replaced my warrant officer with you. Yeah. I don't trust him. I don't trust anybody. What's holding up the repairs? Well, they're pretty much finished now. Why didn't you say so? There's, there's still some things left to do. Like what? Like, we're blind in B and C decks. Reserve power systems are blown. That's crap. We could take off without them. Is that a good idea? I want to get out of here. Let's get this turkey off the ground. <laughs> Exterior planet sunrise. The Nostromo's engines roaring, belching out streams of superheated air. The starship vibrates. Interior bridge, sunrise, the crew at their posts. How do we look down there? 
Interior, engine room, cubicle, Parker and Brett. Okay, but remember, this is a patch job. If we hit too much turbulence, the cell will blow, and that's all she said. So take it easy. <laughs> Interior, bridge, sunrise. I hear you. Ripley, take us up 100 meters and retract the landing struts. Up 100. Exterior, planet, sunrise. The Nostromo lifts off, hovering, hovers above the ground on beams of shimmering flame. The landing struts begin folding. Interior, bridge, day. We hear the thump as the struts retract. Stretch protected. Okay, Ripley, it's all yours. All right, rolling up the G's, and here we go. Exterior, Nostromo, day. The ship begins to surge forward, accelerating upward through the dense atmosphere. Interior, bridge, day. One kilometer on ascension. Engage artificial gravity. Engaged. All right, and I am altering the vector now. A huge tremor runs throughout the ship. What was that? Starboard squad. Uh, uh, starboard squads overheating. I'm shutting it down. Just, just hold us together till we're beyond G one. That's all. The pitch of the engines changes. Exterior Nostromo day. The ship moves at an acute angle, slices through the boiling clouds, black smoke pouring from one engine. Interior engine room cubicle. Parker and Brett in a frenzy of activity. Dust is clogging the damn intake again. Number two is overheating. Spin on it for two more minutes. Interior bridge, day. <laughs> Outside the windows. Clouds, clouds, clouds. Another tremor runs through the ship. The crew's eyes riveted to their instruments. Exterior, Nostromo. The ship clears the top of the cloud layer, bursts out into the star-sprinkled space, trailing a white a wake of clouds. Interior bridge. The crew cheers. Wave the arms of presentation. Oh, God, we made it. Damn, we made it. Interior engine room cubicle. Parker breaks open a can of beer. Walk in the park. When we fix something, it stays fixed. Yeah. Interior bridge. Let's pick up the money and go home. Put her in the garage. Exterior Nostromo. Above the planet, the Nostromo rendezvous with the refinery. Interior bridge. Set course for Earth. Then fire up the big ones and get us up to light plus four. With pleasure. Beats get me out of here. Exterior, outer space. The Nostromo now at light speed. Perceptible movement in the surrounding universe. A corona effect emerges. Stars approaching the Nostromo appear blue. Receding stars going to red. Red shift, made visible because of the craft's velocity. Interior mess. Parker, Brett, Dallas, and Ripley around the table drinking coffee. <sighs> the best thing to do is just freeze him. Stop the goddamn disease. He can get a doctor to look at him when we get back home. Right. Whenever he says anything, you say right. You know that, Brett? Right. <laughs> what do you think, Parker? Your staff just follows you around and says right, like a regular parrot. Yeah, shape up. What are you, some kind of parrot? <laughs> right. Knock it off. Kane will have to go into quarantine. Yeah, and so will we. How about a little something to lower your spirits? Oh me. According to my calculations, based on the time spent getting to and from the planet and the speed at which we're moving away from the other. Give me the short version. How far to Earth? 10 months. Oh, Christ. Beep. Dallas. Come see Kane right away. Any change in his condition? It's simpler if you just come see him. Interior, corridor, outside, infirmary window. What they see is not what they expect. Kane is sitting up in bed, wide awake. They enter. K Kane, are you all right? Mouth's dry. Can I have some water? Instantly, Ash brings him a plastic cup and water. Kane gulps it down in a swallow. Mark. Ripley quickly fills a much bigger container, hands it to Kane. He greedily consumes the entire contents, then sags back, panting on the bunk. How do you feel? <sighs> Terrible. What happened to me? You don't remember. Don't remember anything. I can barely remember my name. Do you hurt? <sighs> All over. I feel like somebody's been beating me with a stick for about six years. God, I'm hungry. Last thing you remember. I don't know. 
Do you remember what happened on the planet? Just some horrible dream about smothering. Where are we? We're on our way home. Getting ready to go back into the freezers. I'm starving. I want some food first. I'm pretty hungry myself. One meal before bed. Interior mess. The entire crew is seated, hungrily swallowing huge portions of artificial food. The cat eats from a dish on the table. First thing I'm going to do when we get back is eat some decent food. I've had worse than this, but I've had better too, but if you know what I mean. <laughs> Christ, you're pounding this stuff like there's no tomorrow. I mean, I like it. No kidding. Yeah, it grows on you. Should. You know what they make this stuff out of. I know what they make the stuff out of. So what? It's food now. You're eating it. Kane grimaces. What's wrong? What's the matter? I don't know. I'm getting cramps. The others stare at him in alarm. Suddenly he makes a loud groaning noise, clutches the edge of the table with his hands, knuckles whitening. <laughs> Breathe deeply. Oh God, it hurts so bad. It hurts. It hurts. Oh. What is it? What hurts? Oh. Oh. Oh my God. <laughs> A red stain, then a smear of blood blossoms on his chest. The fabric of his shirt is ripped open, a small head the size of a man's oh, fist. No. <laughs> <laughs> the crew shout in panic. <laughs> <laughs> Leap back from the table, the cat spits, bolts away. The tiny head lunges forward, comes spurting out of Kane's chest, trailing a thick body, splatters fluids and blood in its wake lands in the middle of the dishes and food, wriggles away while the crew scatters, then the alien being disappears from sight. Kane lies slumped in his chair, very dead, a huge hole in his chest. The dishes are scattered, food is covered with blood. No, 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 no. What was that? What the Christ was that? It was growing in him the whole time oh, and he didn't even know it. It used him as an incubator. That means we've got another one. Yeah, and it's loose on the ship. Slowly, they gather around Kane's gutted corpse. They all look at one another, then at Kane, dead on the table. Interior, corridor, A deck, empty. Parker and Brett descend companionway. They join Ash, Lambert, Ripley, and Dallas. Dimes? Mm, nothing. Nothing. Didn't see a goddamn thing. Didn't see anything. We can't go into hypersleep with that thing running loose. We'd be sitting ducks in the freezers. We have to kill it. We can't kill it. If we do it, we'll spill its body acids right through the hole. Son of a bitch! Then, then, then we have to catch it and eject it from the ship. Our supplies are based on us spending the lim a limited amount of time out of suspended animation, strictly limited. First, we have to find it. No. First, we've got something else to do. He looks at Kane's body seen through the mess doorway. Interior, airlock. Kane's body wrapped in a makeshift shroud. Interior, bridge. The crew looking at Kane on view screens, silent, depressed. Inner hatch sealed. Anybody want to say anything? Nothing to say. He nods at Ripley. She presses a button. Exterior, Nostromo. The outer hatch opens. Kane's body shoots out into eternity, dwarfed by the giant ship. The hatch closes. Interior mess, empty, completely cleaned up. Parker, Brett, and Ripley enter from one side, Dallas, Lambert, and Ash from the other. Any sign on your side? Nothing. They must have gone below somehow. We're gonna have to catch it and eject it from the ship. Sounds great, but how? Room by room, corridor by corridor. Uh, yeah, that would take forever. Our supplies are based on us spending a limited amount of time out of hypersleep, strictly limited. We can't go into the freezer with that thing running loose. Remember what the other one did to Kane's helmet? We'd be sitting ducks. We, we've got to kill it first. We can't kill it. If we do, the body acids will eat right through the hull. I say we put on our pressure chutes and blow all the air out of the ship. That might kill it. What a swell idea. What's wrong with it? I hate to point this out, but it might be better off without oxygen. It lived that way long enough. 
it, there's another problem. There's no visual communication on B and C deck. All the screens are out. And what do we do when we find it? Trap it somehow. We had a really strong piece of net we could bag it. I could put something together, a long metal rod with a battery in it. It'll only take a few hours. Shut the fuck up. Why do we listen to this meathead? <laughs> <laughs> he might be right for once. Gabby, you need to unmute Carly. Oh, why, why is Carly muted? Oh, oh, because of the dogs. Go Sorry, I was, there were dogs were barking and then it wouldn't let me back in. Okay, uh, exterior outer space. The Nostromo continues through the vortex. Interior Narcissus. Dallas seated in the shuttlecraft, staring at the myriad lights from outer space. Ripley climbs beside him. How did I find you here? Are the nets finished? Uh, we've got an hour. Look, I need some relief. Why'd you wait until now? Let me tell you something. You keep staring out there long enough, they'll be peeling you off the wall. Ripley begins taking off her boots. We're the new pioneers, Ripley. We even get to have our own special diseases. Yeah, I'm tired of talking. She rises and removes her <laughs> upper garments. <laughs> you waited too long. Give it a try anyway. Ooh. Clothing removed. His arms move around her. Interior bridge. The crew is assembled. Brett unfolds several yards of asbestos netting. Hands out five thin rods, each of them like metal broom handles. I put portable generators in each of these. They're insulated down here. Just be goddamn careful not to get your hand on the end. Touches the tip to a metal object. A blue spark leaps. It won't damage the little bastard unless its skin is a lot thinner than ours. It'll just give it a little incentive. No, if we could only find it. Ash picks up a portable unit. I'm taking care of that tracking device. You set it to search for a movement, moving object. It hasn't much range, but when you get within a certain distance, it starts beeping. What's it key on? Micro changes in air density. Keep it pointed ahead of you. We'll break into two teams. Whoever finds it first catches it in the net and ejects it from the nearest airlock. For starters, let's make sure the bridge is safe. We seem to be okay if this damn thing works. Ash and myself will go with Lambert. Brett and Parker will make up the second team. Ripley, you command it. Channels are open on all decks. We'll be in constant touch. Interior passageway B level. Lambert and Dallas carry the net. Ash walks directly behind carrying the tracking device. He continually scans from side to side. Lambert stops by a stairwell. Anything down there? Interior, another passageway, B-level. Parker and Brett move silently along, Ripley ahead of them with the tracker by the stairwell. Nothing. They move on, a small light flashes. Wait, hold on, I've got something. Where's it coming from? Uh, machine screwed up, I can't tell. Needle's spinning all over the dial. God damn, malfunction. Wait, no, 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 it's just confused. It's coming from below us. They all look down at their feet. Interior maintenance, sea level. Ripley, Parker, and Brett come down the ladder into an endless oily corridor. They stop at the foot of the companionway. They move down corridor into darkness. Okay. All right, no, back this way. They begin to walk in that direction, entering drab section of ship, surrounded by deep shadows, footsteps clanging on the metal deck. I thought you fixed 12 modules. We did. Circuits must have burned out. They switch on lights, move around two turns. Wait. They it's stop. almost within five, it's within five meters. Parker and Brett heft the net. Ripley has the prod in one hand, tracker in the other, moves with great care, almost in a half crouch, ready to leap back. Prod extended, Ripley constantly glances at her tracker. The device leads her up to a small hatch in the bulkhead. Perspiration rivers down her face. She sets aside the tracker, raises the prod, grasps the hatch handle, yanks it open, jams the electric prod inside, a nerve-shattering squall. Then a small creature comes flying out of the locker, eyes glaring, claws flashing. Instinctively, they throw the net over it. Very annoyed, they open the net and release the captive, which happens to be the cat. Hissing and spitting, it scampers away. God damn it. Hold it, hold it. We should have killed it. Now we might pick it up on the tracker again. 
go get it. Go get it. We'll, we'll go on. Right. Ripley and Parker move down the passageway. Brett follows the direction taken by the cat, moves across passageway into equipment maintenance area. Interior, equipment maintenance area, sea level. Brett walking between rows of shadowed equipment, looking for the cat, nervous. Jones. Yeah, kitty. Jones. God damn it, Jones. Scratching noises, a reassuring cat yowl. Brett moves on. Interior, passageway, sea level. Ripley and Parker walk along. Tracker signal weakens, finally stops. Nothing here. Let's go back. Interior, undercarriage room, sea level. Brett enters, still looking for Jones. Another yowl followed by a hiss, two eyes shining in the dark. Jones. Relieved, Brett moves towards the cat. <sighs> here, kitty. Come on, Jones. Brett reaches for Jones. Jones hisses. An arm reaches for Brett, the alien, now seven feet tall, hanging from the undercarriage strut in reverse position, grabs Brett and swings up into darkness. Brett screams to no avail. In the doorway, <laughs> in the doorway Ripley and Parker, they witness the horror. Interior mess. The remaining crew assembled. Long faces. Dallas sits with a layout in front of him. Parker stands anxiously by the doorway. Whatever it was, it was big. Swung down on him like a giant fucking bat. You're absolutely sure it dragged Brett into a vent? It disappeared into one of the cooling ducts. No question. It's using the air shafts to move around. Like Jones? Brett could still be alive. No, not a chance. It snapped him up like a rag doll. What does it want him for? An incubator, perhaps. Our food? Either way, it's two down and five to go. I say we blast the rotten bastard with a laser and take our chances. No way. It's as big as you say. It's holding enough acid to burn a hole in this ship as big as this room. Shooting it is not going to help us. It's self-regenerating. You saw what happened when we operated on it. The shaft could work for us. That duct comes out at the main airlock. There's only one big opening on the way, but we can cover that. Then we drive it into the airlock and blast it into space. Drive it? I'm telling you, the son of a bitch is huge. The science department, do you have anything to offer? Well, it seems to have adapted to an oxygen-rich environment. And it's certainly adapted well for its nutritional requirements. The only thing we don't know is about temperature. Okay, all right. What about temperature? What happens if we change it? We could try it. Most animals retreat from fire. Parker, how long to hook up three or four incinerating units? Give me 20 minutes. Only one thing left. Who gets to crawl the vent with it? Parker, you always wanted a full share. Cut it out. Parker, Lambert, you cover the maintenance level exit. Ripley, you and Ash take the airlock. There's no doubt as to who's going inside the vent. It's Dallas. Our Ex <laughs> fearless leader. <laughs> Exterior, outer space. Nostromo at light plus four. Interior, airlock, vestibule. Ripley stands in the vestibule, looks through the bulkhead door to the airlock. She throws a switch, watches air shaft entrance into the airlock open. The trap is ready. Interior, equipment maintenance area. Parker and Lambert get set. Interior, air shaft. Completely dark. Dallas turns on his helmet light. Flips switch on throat mic. You receive me? Ripley? Parker? Lambert? Interior, equipment maintenance area. The hum of vast cooling plants. Large air shafts run off in different directions. Parker and Lambert stand ready by a duct. Lambert hits the wall amp button. We're in position. I'll try and pick you up on the tracker. Parker, if it tries to come out by you, make sure you drive it back in. I'll push it forward. Right. Interior airlock vestibule near the airlock. Ripley pops open the hatch. The airlock now open and ready. She moves to the air duct opening. <sighs> airlock opening. Ready. Ready. Interior air shaft. Dallas begins to crawl forward. The tunnel is narrow, only a foot or two wider than his shoulders. I'm underway. Turns a corner, several more tight turns. Instinctively, Dallas pulls back, raises the flamethrower, fires a blast around the corner into the darkness. It roars loudly in the confined tube. Smoke drifts back into his face. Interior equipment maintenance area, a large rectangular duct in one wall. That's where it's got to come out, if it leaves the main shaft. He throws a switch. A metal pane rises and seals off the opening. Let's keep it open. I'd like to know if anything's coming. Reluctantly, Parker again throws the switch and raises the metal pane. Interior, airlock vestibule. Ripley, waiting. Interior, air shaft. Dallas, still crawling on hands and knees. Ahead, the shaft takes an abrupt downward turn. He moves towards the corner, fires another blast from the flamethrower. 
then starts crawling down head first. Interior equipment maintenance area. Lambert sees something on the tracker. Beginning to get a reading on you. Interior air shaft. The shaft makes yet another turn. Puts Dallas into an almost immobilized position. Interior air shaft. Dallas against a wall of the shaft. Clutching his flamethrower. Whispers into his throat mic. Ripley. Interior airlock vestibule. Did you clear? Interior air shaft. I don't think this shaft goes much further. It's getting hot in here. He readies the flamethrower. Interior equipment maintenance area. Parker readies his weapon. Interior air shaft. Double tiered passageway. The air shaft tributary opens into a larger two tier air tunnel. Dallas crawls out and stands. Moves to a catwalk floor. Looks about. Moves forward. Reaches a repair junction. Sits. His feet dangle beneath the catwalk floor to the next level. Lambert, what kind of reading are you getting? Interior equipment maintenance area. Lambert huddled over her tracker, puzzled. I'm, I'm not sure. There seems to be some kind of double signal. Interior air shaft, double tiered passageway. Dallas sitting, his feet still dangling in the dark beneath the catwalk. Maybe interference. I'll push on ahead. Dallas begins to rise. From below, a gentle movement towards the hanging feet. A hand reaches up, misses his leg as Dallas moves ahead. Further on. Lambert, am I coming in any clearer? It's clear all right, but I'm still getting two signals. I'm, I'm not sure which one is which. Dallas stops, turns around, looks back down through the catwalk, lowers the nose of the flamethrower, his finger on the trigger. From behind him, the hand reaches up. The alien is the front signal. Interior oh. airlock vestibule. Ripley bends forward, hears the sound of the struggle, and Dallas's scream. She cries. <laughs> Interior equipment maintenance area, Lambert and Parker hearing it all. Oh, Jen's muted. Okay, got it. You're unmuted. Hello? Yeah, you're back. Shit, hold on. I lost to everyone. Top of 85. I can't hear anyone. I don't know if anyone can hear me. Yeah, we can hear you. We can mm -hmm. hear you. Hello? Yeah. Yeah. We can hear you. Uh oh. Okay. okay, we've been having a lot of technical difficulties on this. Show. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a ghost? All that, acid, all that acid burning through the floor. It ate through the hole, and now none of our AirPods work. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, the AirPods, maybe, yeah. I've just been using my computer microphone. Mm -hmm. uh, I was, I've been giving a, uh, a lesson. No? Oh, Jen's back. Okay. Yay. Yeah. Sorry. Ripley. I the monitor is just completely crapped out. I got kicked oh, out. No. Oh, oh, no. So sorry to break up the dramatic. That's OK. I was about to go into a, a TED talk about some fun facts about this movie, but you've saved everyone. After. <laughs> Thank you, Jen, for saving us. Where are we? After. Uh, after page uh, top of, well, so bottom Scene. of 84. Scene 150. Dallas, Dallas. Dallas screams. Ah! Interior equipment maintenance area, Lambert and Parker hearing it all. Ah! Oh my god. Interior mess. Dallas's flamethrower on table surface. We just find it laying there. No sign of him, no blood, nothing. Ripley, Ash, and Lambert standing by the table. Lambert obviously still shaken. Ripley, this puts you in command. It's okay with him. Unless someone's got a better idea about dealing with the alien, we proceed with Dallas's plan. And wind up the same way? No thanks. You got a better idea? Yeah. Abandon ship. Take the shuttlecraft and get the hell out of here. Take our chances on getting picked up later. You are forgetting something. Dallas and Brett may not be dead. It's a ghastly oh, probability, Christ. perhaps, but not a certainty. Ash is right. We've got to give it another try. You know what's using the air shafts. Let's take it level by level. This time we'll laser seal every bulkhead and vent behind us until we corner it. I'll go along with that. 
All right. How are our weapons? They're working fine. We could use more fuel for that one. Then you'd better get it. Ash, you go with them. I can manage. Any other really? thoughts from you or mother? Nothing new. Still collating. Yeah, I can't believe that. I'm sorry, Captain. What would you like me to do? Go back to your mother and keep asking questions until you get some better answers. All right, I'll try. He leaves. Interior maintenance area, C deck. Parker selects two full methane cylinders. He tests them, moves out. Interior mess. Ripley sits beside Lambert. Try to hang on. You know Dallas would have done the same for us. I know as you're asking us to stay and get picked off one by one. I promise you, if it looks like it won't work, I'll bail us out of here. Interior passageway B level. Parker returning with methane cylinder, turns a corner, comes to an abrupt halt, a movement in front of him beyond the airlock. He hesitates, then another shadowy movement. Interior bridge, Ripley and Lambert, Parker's voice on voice amp, muffled. Ripley hits a toggle. Keep it down. Up the corridor, the movement stops. Interior bridge. Did we lose Jen? Sorry, I lost it again. Where are we? I'm so sorry. Uh, top of 83. Wait, 83? What? Oh, uh, uh, on the 88. Sorry, 88. top of 88. I'm so sorry. I can't read. This is how you find <laughs> out I can't read. I'm making you all do this because I can't read. <laughs> What if this was how you found out? Sorry, page 88, you said? Yeah, 88. Um, oh, the PDF. The movement stop. PDF page. Oh, the there's PDF. page numbers, and then there's PDF page numbers. And they how are about different. Number? Very specific. Page number, 156A. Thank you. Yes. Ripley. Interior passageway B level. Parker covers the wall communication with his hand. Keep it down. Up the corridor, the movement stops. Interior bridge. Can't hear you. Repeat. Interior passageway B level, Parker whispering. The alien, it's outside the main airlock door. Open the door slowly. When I say, close it fast and blow the outer door. Interior blister, Ash listens. Interior passageway B level, Parker still whispering. Open it slowly. Interior bridge, Ripley hesitates, starts to reply, throw switch. Interior airlock B deck, low servo whine, door opens slowly. Green light throbbing inside airlock. Creature looks curiously at it, moves onto the threshold. Interior passageway B level, Parker watches. Interior airlock, creature moves further into the airlock, fascinated by the green light. Interior passageway B level, urgent whisper into voice amp. Now, now! Interior bridge, as Ripley moves to throw the switch, interior airlock, suddenly from out of nowhere, a klaxon wails. The creature leaps back across the threshold, Threshold of the airlock, bewildered, screams as the inner hatch closes on an appendage, acid boiling out, the appendage crushed, the acid bubbles, metal boils in the door. <laughs> Interior passageway B level, Parker watches, frozen. The alien wrenches itself free, comes flying outward, smashes Parker down, flees. On the wall, a green light goes on, inner hatch closed. Interior airlock, metal still boiling, the outer hatch begins to open. Interior bridge. Parker! <laughs> What's happening, Parker? Inner hatch sealed. The outer hatch is open. What about Parker? I don't know. Take over. Ripley bolts out of the bridge. Exterior Nostromo. The airlock is open. Interior passage near airlock B level. Parker is unconscious. Interior airlock. The inner hatch still closed. Metal boils. The hole growing deeper. Interior passageway A deck. Ripley runs toward the airlock corridor. Interior airlock. Metal boiling indoor. Interior passageways, B block. Ripley slams to a momentary halt against a bulkhead, regains her balance, starts running. Interior passage near airlock, B level. Parker now half conscious. Ripley arrives as the hole in the door blows open. Escaping air shrieks, flashing sign comes on, critical depressurization, emergency klaxon. Simultaneously, vestibule doors close either end, sealing in Ripley and Parker. Door nearest to Parker, half close on one of the methane cylinders, leaving a large gap. Windstorm begins as whole begins as whole and air lock grows. Ripley reaches for the other cylinder, begins smashing the jam cylinder out of the door. Blood froths at their noses and ears. Cylinder finally is driven out. The door slams closed. Interior bridge. Lambert watches. Emergency light readings. Hull breached. Emergency bulkheads closed. Ash, get the oxygen. Meet me at the airlock. Rushes out down corridor. 
Interior passageway near airlock, B level. Ripley staggers toward an emergency panel at far end of corridor. Pinging sound, misty atmosphere. Tries to activate the door, cannot. Lambert appears from other side of bulkhead, activates door from outside, rush of oxygen. <laughs> Exterior Nostromo, plume of vapor freezes in the vacuum. Interior passageway near airlock, B level. Repressurization sounds. Parker regains consciousness, struggles to breathe. Ripley unable to move. Breath coming in shallow pants. Lambert with an oxygen tank. Ash follows. Oxygen administered to Ripley and Parker, finally. You all right? We didn't get it. The warning went off and it jumped back in the ship. Who hit the warning? You tell me. What does that mean? I guess the alarm went off by itself. If you've got something to say, say it. I'm sick of these coy accusations. Nobody's accusing you. Like hell. Patch him up. How much oxygen have we lost? And I want an exact reading. Why were you accusing him? Because I think he's lying. <laughs> and if I can get into his tape records, I'll prove it. Could have been an accident. You think I'm wrong? I don't know. Wrong or crazy. Wow. Wow. Interior computer annex. Ripley hurriedly taps out the five-digit code. Rams thumb against an indent print. The inner door opens. Data banks come to life. She sits at the console, thinks for a moment, then punches a code. Nothing happens. Punches another combination. Nothing happens. Frustration. Another combination. One screen comes to life. Another combination. She moves to the second keyboard. Screen one spells out the question. Question. Who turned on airlock two warning system? Response. Ash. Another code. Question. Is Ash protecting the alien? Oh, wait. Gabby, are you, is this mother? Are you supposed to be answering these? Or it's okay. Speak mother speaks out loud later. Okay, cool. Plan. Go for it. Response, yes, new code. Question, why? Response, special order 937, science eyes only. She starts a new code. A hand slams down next to Ripley's arm. It sinks elbow deep into the computer. She whips around in her chair, faces Ash. He smiles. The man seems a bit too much for you, but then leadership is always difficult under these circumstances. Ripley slowly backs up out of the chair, keeps it between them, plays for time. Problem's not leadership, Ash. It's loyalty. <laughs> I think we've all been doing our best. Lambert's getting a little pessimistic, but we've always known she's been on the emotional side. I'm not worried about Lambert right now. I'm worried about you. She starts oh, to run. All that paranoia coming up again. With that, he reaches out. Ripley bolts by him into the corridor. Ash chases her through the bridge and into the mess. Three bulkhead doors slam down behind them. Ash catches her. Parker and Lambert burst into the mess. Lambert falls on Ash's back. Ash turns to Lambert, tosses her across the room, returns to Ripley, again choking her. Parker lifts the tracker, steps behind Ash, swings the tracker, wallop, tears his head off. Wires ascending from Ash's trunk, where his head refused, used to be. Ash's hands release Ripley, search above his neck for his missing head. He walks backward, all eyes on Ash's headless body. He walks the room, still feeling for his missing head. A robot, a goddamn android. Ash turns on him, starts to advance. Parker hits him again with the tracker. Again, again, no avail. Ash begins choking Parker. Ripley picks up one of the prod sticks, closes on Ash's back, tears away the fabric. Lambert pulls at Ash's legs. Ripley tearing at the controls buried in the cavity once covered by his head. Parker's eyes bulge in pain. Bulge in pain. Ash headless, choking, choking, choking. Ripley finds the wire, stabs the prod home. Ash's grip lessens. Another stab, electrical flash. The grip lessens. Another stab, a flash of circuits. The headless body collapses. Parker trying to regain his breath. Damn you! <sighs> Kicks the headless body. Lambert oh, looks at Ripley. Tell me, what the hell's going on? There's only one way to find out. What's that? Wire his head back up. Ash has been protecting the alien from the beginning. He's the one who let it on board. He let it grow inside Can. He's the one who blew the airlock warning. But why? Fucking corporation must have picked up on the transmission. We happen to be the next ship going down. They put Ash on board to check it out and make sure we followed something Mother calls Special Order 937. Symphony. Oh, great. You've got it all figured out. Now tell me why we put this son of a bitch together. Because we've got to find out what else they're holding back. Ash's head is on the table. His eyes flicker into consciousness. Ash? Ash, can you hear me? Yes, I can. 
What was Special Order 937? That is against regulation. You know I can't tell you. Oh, then there's no point in talking. Parker, pull the plug. My orders, in essence, directed me to reroute the ship to the source of the signal. There we were to investigate a life form, almost certainly hostile, and bring it back for observation using discretion, of course. Why? Why didn't you warn us? Because you might not have gone in, the shares notwithstanding. You and the damn company. What about our lives, man? Expendable, I'm afraid. It wasn't personal, just the luck of the draw. The transmission was a warning. Yes, and frighteningly specific. The derelict spacecraft landed on the planet, like Kane they encountered. One of the alien spores, before they all died, they managed to set up the warning. How do we kill it? I don't think that you can, but I still might be able to help you. I'm not exactly at my best at the moment, if you would reconnect. <laughs> nice try, Ash, but no way. You idiots! You still don't realize what you're dealing with. The alien is a perfect organism. Superbly structured, cunning, quintessentially violent. With your limited capabilities, you have no chance against it. You fucking admire it. How can you not admire the simple symmetry it presents? An intergalactic parasite from time immemorial, capable of laying dormant for infinite periods, its sole purpose to destroy other species merely to recreate itself for life and anti-life. I've heard enough of this shit. <laughs> He built you. You're supposed to be part of our survival equipment. You gave me intelligence. With intellect comes the inevitability of choice. I have had the rare honor of witnessing one of the moments when the major evolutionary step is taken to highly successful species. In intimate competition for resources and survival, I am loyal only to discovering the truth. A scientific truth demands beauty, harmony, and above all else, simplicity. The problem between you and the alien will produce a simple and elegant solution. Only one of you will survive. I say pull the plug. I agree. A last word, a legacy, if you will. Maybe it's intelligent. Maybe you should try to communicate with it. Did you? Please, let my grave hold some secrets. Goodbye, Ash. Ripley pulls the plug. Interior dark corridor to bridge. Ripley in the computer annex. Lambert and Parker enter. He's right about one thing. We've got less than 12 hours oxygen left. It's all over. I don't know about the rest of you, but I think I prefer a painless, peaceful death to any of the alternatives on offer. Not there yet. Lambert holds up huh? a small cart of Spanschul's suicide pills. We're not, huh? I think we should blow up the ship. I'll stick with chemicals if you don't mind. No, no, listen, we leave in the shuttle and then we can blow up the ship. Interior corridor B deck. Ripley, Parker, and Lambert walk rapidly down the corridor. We're gonna get the hell off the ship and blow it up. And take our chances in the shuttle. Right, um, we'll need coolant for the life support. Round up all that you can carry. I'm gonna start preparing the shuttle. They move out. Interior Narcissus. Ripley enters the Narcissus, cautious at first then hurries to throw switches. Twists her hair back as she works feverishly. Stops as she hears Jones meowing over the intercom. Jones? Ripley runs out of the Narcissus, leaving doors open. Interior bridge. Jones lying on Dallas's console. Ripley comes in, smiles. <sighs> Jones, you're in luck. As she reaches for him, Jones jumps off the console and moves away. <laughs> Come on, Jones. She moves after the cat. We hear Parker and Lambert over the communicator from the garage. How much do you think we'll need? Ripley, still in pursuit of the cat. Interior, garage. Parker and Lambert loading coolant cylinders. All you can carry. Ripley's voice over communicator from bridge. God damn it, Jones, come here! Interior, bridge. Ripley furious, but still speaking gently. Here, kitty. Come on. Come here, kitty. Jones moves away. Interior, food locker. B-deck. 
Arms full, Parker moves out of the locker. Lambert is still making her selection. A faint light on the tracker, unnoticed. Interior, bridge, Ripley finally corners Jones, finds his box, tries to put him in it. Jones resists, ultimately futile. Oh my yeah. God, this fucking cat. <laughs> Beautiful the cat. The cat from the future. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Sorry. Whoop, my bad. Interior food locker corridor outside. Parker attempts to pick up the flamethrower. Can't manage it and the food. Drops some of the packages. God damn. What's the matter? Nothing. Just hurry up. Tracker flashes faster. Now it's noticed. Parker picks up the flamethrower. Let's get out of here. Right now. The alien appears out of the air shaft ventilator. Lambert turns, screams. Oh! <laughs> Unfolding, the alien grabs for her. Interior bridge. Ripley freezes as she hears Lambert scream. Interior corridor, outside food locker. Parker looks back into the locker, unable to use the flamethrower without hitting Lambert. He hesitates for a moment, then strides into the locker, wielding the flamethrower like a club. God damn you! Interior food locker. The alien drops Lambert. Parker lands a blow with the flamethrower. No effect. The alien strikes him once, killing him instantly. He now moves to Lambert. Interior bridge, Ripley listening on the co communicator. Lambert's dying shrieks. Then the voice amp goes dead. Silence. Parker! Lambert! She waits for a response, but her expression shows that she expects none. A long moment, expectation fulfilled, nightmare without end. Interior, B-level, companionway. Ripley descends cautiously, holding flamethrower. Jones left above, squalling. Interior, cor uh, interior, cor Corridor B deck. Ripley moving warily, carrying flamethrower. Nears entrance to food locker, looks in, sees carnage. Interior, maintenance corridor, sea level. Ripley running toward engine room, out of breath. Exhausted, she stops, gulping for air. Suddenly ahead of her, the sound of human weeping. She moves quietly ahead until the source of the sound is directly under her feet. She is standing on a round metal plate. Ripley starts to remove the disc. Interior, undercarriage, maintenance room number four. The round opening illuminates a dark ladderway. Still carrying a flamethrower, Ripley starts downwards, pitch black. Ripley arrives at deck level, shines her light. Its arc reveals the alien's lair, bones, shreds of flesh, pieces of clothing and shoes, bizarre extrusions on the wall. Something moves in the darkness. Ripley spins, turns her light toward the movement. Hanging from the ceiling is a huge cocoon, woven from fine white silk-like material. Flamethrower ready, Ripley approaches sees that the cocoon is semi-transparent. The body of Dallas is inside. Unexpectedly, his eyes open, focus on Ripley. His voice is a whisper. Go away. What did it do? Dallas moves his head slightly. Ripley turns her light. Another cocoon dangles from the ceiling, but of a different texture, smaller and darker with a harder shell almost exactly like the ovoids in the derelict ship. I'll get you out of there. We'll get up to the auto dock. What can I do? Kill me. Ripley stares at him, raises the flamethrower, sprays a molten blast, another blast. The entire compartment bursts into flames. Ripley turns and scrambles back up the ladderway. Interior oily corridor, sea level. Ripley emerges from below, gasps for breath, regains control of herself. Exterior outer space. At light speed, the Nostromo and refinery appear to hang motionless, star clusters rolling past an infinite distance. Interior engine room, cubicle. Ripley, Ripley enters the power center, stares at the massive light plus at engines. Approaches the main control board, begins closing the switches one by one. A long moment. Sirens begin to honk. Mother speaks. Attention. The cooling units for the Light Plus engines are not functioning. Engines will overload in four minutes, 50 seconds. Interior, oily corridor, sea level. Ripley running toward B-deck com companionway. Interior, B-level, corridor. Ripley starts, toward <sighs> Ripley starts toward Narcissus, remembers Jones. Interior, A to B levels, companionway. Jones howling in his box. Ripley reaches up and grabs him. Interior, B level, corridor leading to airlock. Ripley carrying Jones, holding flamethrower. Jones hisses, fur rises. Ripley stops and stares down the corridor toward Narcissus. The alien can be heard thrashing about the shuttlecraft. 
Ripley turns and bolts toward the engine room, leaving Jones on B-level companionway. Interior companionway into Ooh. oily corridor, E-level. E-level. Ripley bounds down the companionway, her footsteps clanging metallically throughout the ship, a final sprint towards the engine room. Attention. Engines will overload in three minutes, 20 seconds. Interior engine room, cubicle. The door crashes open. Ripley comes pounding in, the chamber filled with smoke. Engines whining dangerously. Ripley breaks out in perspiration from the intense heat. She runs to the, to the controls, begins throwing the cooling unit switches back into place. The sirens continue sounding. Attention, engines will overload in three minutes. Mother, I've turned all the cooling units back on. Too late for remedial action. The core <laughs> has begun to melt. Engines will overload in two minutes, 35 seconds. A moment, then Ripley turns and runs from the engine room. Interior oily, oily corridor, companionway. Ripley runs back down the corridor, up the companionway, exhausted, stumbling. Attention, engines will overload in two minutes. Fuck <laughs> off, mother! <laughs> <laughs> Interior B-level companionway, she reaches companionway, picks up Jones. Interior B-level, corridor leading to Narcissus. Ripley staggers toward the airlock, the Narcissus berth beyond. She drags Jones and raises the flamethrower, turns to see if the creature is behind her, then advances down the passageway, goaded on by the computer. Attention, engines will explode in 90 seconds. Damn. <laughs> she makes it to the vestibule, looks into the shuttle. Interior Narcissus, Ripley scans the narrow deck, empty. Interior vestibule. She turns and dashes back, grabs the cat box, runs back toward the shuttle. Attention, the engines will explode in 60 seconds. Interior Narciss Narcissus. Ripley enters on the run, hurls the cat box toward the front, dives into the control chair, hits the launch button. Exterior Nostromo, outer space. The retainer clips drop away, a blast of ramjets. The shuttle is launched from the mothership. Interior Narcissus. Ripley frantically straps herself in, G-forces from the shuttle's acceleration pulling against her. Exterior space. The Narcissus continues to power away from the mothership, the larger bulk of the Nostromo quietly receding. All is strangely serene. Right, right. Interior, Narcissus. Ripley finishes strapping herself in, reaches and grabs the cat box, the cat yelling within. Ripley hugs the box to her chest, hunches her head down over the container. Exterior space. The Nostromo drifts farther away from the shuttlecraft, finally becomes a small point of light, then it blows up transforms into expanding orange fireball, pieces of metal flying in all directions. And then the refinery explodes. 200 million tons of gas bloating silently into the cosmos. Rest in peace. Pour one out for everybody. <laughs> Interior narcissus. <laughs> the shockwave hits the shuttlecraft, jolting and rattling everything within. Then all is quiet. Ripley unhooks herself from her straps, rises and goes to the back of the escape craft, stares out through the porthole, face bathed in the orange light. Exterior space. Pieces of debris float past. The boiling fireball fades into nothingness. The Nostromo has ceased to exist. Interior Narcissus. Ripley watching the final destiny of her ship and crewmates. A very long moment. Then behind her, the lethal hand emerges from deep shadow. The alien has been in the shuttlecraft all along. <coughs> the cat yowls. Is that the cat, Abby? It was the cat and me, because what yeah. a twist. Can I also just interrupt just to say that Mal watched the movie for the first time last night and texted me and was like texting me throughout it. Then there was a long break. Then they texted, it's in the shuttle. <laughs> <laughs> it was beautiful. Okay, please continue. Uh, Ripley whirls, finds herself facing the creature. Ripley's first thought is for the flamethrower. It lies on the deck next to the alien. Next, she glances around for a place to hide. Her eye falls in a small locker containing a pressure suit the door standing open. She begins to edge toward the compartment. The creature stands, comes for her. Ripley dives through the open door, hurls herself inside, slams it shut. Interior locker, a clear glass panel in the door. The alien puts its head up to the window, peers in at Ripley, their faces only two inches apart. The alien looking at Ripley almost in curiosity. The moaning of the cat distracts it. <coughs> Interior Narcissus, the alien moves to the pressurized cat box, bends down and peers inside. The cat yowls louder as his container is lifted. Interior locker. Ripley knocks on the glass, trying to distract the creature from the cat. The alien's face is instantly back at the window. Getting no more interference from her, the creature returns to the cat box. Ripley looks around, sees the pressure suit, quickly begins to pull it on. Interior Narcissus. The alien picks up the cat box, shakes it. The cat moans. 
interior locker. Ripley is halfway into the pressure suit. Interior Narcissus. The creature throws the cat box down very hard, picks it up again, hammers it against the wall, then jams it into a crevice. Begins to pound the container into the opening, the cat now beyond all hysteria. Interior locker. <laughs> Ripley pulls on the helmet, <laughs> latches it into place, turns the oxygen valve. With a hiss, the suit fills itself. A rack on the wall contains a long metal rod. Ripley peels off the rubber tip, revealing a sharp steel point. Interior spacesuit locker. Ripley inhales, kicks the door again. Interior Narcissus. The creature rises, faces the locker, catches the steel sh <laughs> catches the steel shaft through its midriff. The alien clutches at the spear. <laughs> Yellow acid begins to flow from the wound. Before the fluid can touch the floor, Ripley reaches back and pulls the switch, blows the rear hatch. The atmosphere in the shuttle immediately sucked into space. The bleeding creature along with it, Ripley grabs a strut to keep from being pulled out. The alien shoots past her, grabs Ripley's ankle with an appendage. Exterior Narcissus, outer space. <laughs> Ripley now hanging halfway out of the shuttlecraft, the alien clinging to her leg. She kicks it off with her free foot. The creature holds fast. Interior Narcissus, Ripley looks for any salvation, grabs the hatch lever, yanks it. The hatch slams shut, closing Ripley safely inside. Exterior Narcissus, outer space. The alien still outside the shuttlecraft, within the vacuum of space. The tip of its appendage smashed into the closed hatch. Interior Narcissus. Acid starts to foam along the base of the hatch, eats away at the metal. Ripley stumbles forward to the controls, pushes the ramjet lever. Exterior Narcissus, outer space. The creature struggling, jet exhausts located at the rear of the craft. The engines belch flame for a few seconds, then shut off. Incinerated, the alien tumbles slowly away into space. Interior Narcissus. Ripley hurries to the rear hatch, peers out through the glass. Exterior, outer space. The burning mass of the alien drifts slowly away, writhing, smoking, tumbling into the distance, pieces dropping off. The shape bloats, then bursts, spray of particles in all directions, then smoldering fragments dwindle into infinity. This is so beautifully written. Okay, sorry. It really is. Interior Narcissus later. Now repressurized, Ripley is seated in the control chair, calm and composed, almost cheerful. Cat purring in her lap. She dictates into a recorder. Final report of the commercial Starship Nostromo. Third officer reporting. The other members of the crew, Kane, Lambert, Parker, Brett, Ash, and the Captain Dallas are dead. The cargo and the ship destroyed. I should reach the frontier in about six weeks. With a little luck, the network should pick me up. This is Ripley, last survivor of the Nostromo, signing off. She switches off. Interior Narcissus, Ripley in hypersleep. Exterior, outer space. The shuttlecraft Narcissus sails into the distance. Fade out, the end. Woo! Woo! Guys, what acting! Oh my god, what beautiful Brilliant. acting! Oh, I can't wait to put this one on YouTube. I'm, wait, I'm Gabby, what are the spoilers? Uh, oh, okay, so um, Ash being an android is... Uh, is a, a, a big reveal and um so there was this thing there were other scenes where it was like clear that all the crew uh fucks each other and what? not just uh ripley and dallas but the like everyone does and there's uh, also allusion to lambert and ripley fucking but also wait, everyone fucks every all of them yeah it's except for a robot for a long time but, okay so wait so then there's a scene that was cut which was Lambert and Ripley talking, and they're like, Ash is weird, right? And they're like, yeah, he's weird. And then Ripley's like, have you ever fucked him? And Lambert's like, no, have you? And, and Ripley's like, no. And then they're like, huh, he hasn't ever wanted to fuck either of us. What's that about? <laughs> that, that scene is supposed to be a clue that he's a robot. But that's, wow. that's a wow. terrible clue because- You have to be a robot not to want to fuck Ripley. <laughs> Yes, yeah, that's kind of the thing. <laughs> Everybody knows that, listen, in the age of Westworld, we all know that robots fuck. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. It's supposed to be a little bit of like a, like a foreshadowing that he's, uh, that he's a robot. Because some robots fuck, some robots it. don't fuck. Yeah, he doesn't fuck. <laughs> Normalized robots <laughs> fucking. He's like really, he's like married to his job, you know, he's really. Oh my God.